Moving on to our fourth and final main topic today. I announced yesterday that for the next week or two, maybe even longer than that, since a lot of us are stuck at home at the moment, Rob and I are going to be doing every day a recommendation of things you should be watching <laughs> at home. Obviously not not necessarily the bigger things like Avengers Endgame or whatever. Of course, we all know to watch that stuff, but maybe some slightly underappreciated, some slightly lesser well-known, some slightly diamonds in the rough kind of movies that you guys can take this opportunity while you're at home to check out. And uh, yesterday, we had a couple of really good ones. We had Age of Adeline that Rob suggested, and I, of course, suggested Stardust. So today, we've got a couple of new ones. Rob, why don't you take the honors, and why don't you lead off for us here right now about... What is a movie you're going to recommend that since people are at home, check this out because you probably or maybe haven't seen it? Okay, one of my favorite directors is Michael Mann. And everyone knows Michael Mann from things like Heat, Last of the Mohicans, The Insider. Miami Vice. I mean, he's a Miami Vice, which I love. He's a powerhouse director. But in 1981, he made his first theatrically released feature film with a powerhouse performance by James Kahn as an ex-Kahn who uh, is still one of the best jewel thieves in Chicago. And it's about his life and what he does and what happens when he gets mixed up with the local mob. And it is a crime thriller that is also a very personal story of one man. And that movie is, of course, Thief. Thief is one of my favorite, if you like crime stories, crime thrillers, it, it, that is also a very personal story. Uh, this is one of the best. And James Caan delivers an, an amazing performance. Willie Nelson is in this movie. Tuesday Weld is in this movie. And it is a star-making turn by Robert Prosky as the mob boss who James Caan gets involved with. Of course, uh, Jim Belushi is also James Caan's second. He's his lieutenant. He helps him out on everything. And the score is by Tangerine Dream. This movie is from the dawn of the 80s. I mean, this film is so good. I love this movie so much. and But I have to tell you, I went and saw it for the very first time in Palm Springs on spring break with my grandfather. I would go visit him. And this movie has one of the greatest lines of profanity or, or just string of bad <laughs> language delivered by Robert Prosky. And I was sitting next to my very proper grandfather who I've never heard say a bad word in my life. And I think I was I was 14 years old when he, I, I bamboozled him to taking me to see this. And my blood froze as I turned. I'd never heard such bad language in a movie before. And uh, it's in a, it, it, James Conn has been put into a compromising scene. And Robert Prosky's delivering the smackdown on him in a very colorfully metaphoric way. And I was just like, oh, 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 oh. And this soundtrack to this day. It might be the soundtrack I listen to the most of all the soundtracks I own. This film is so cool. And Criterion put a, a director's cut that has a few added scenes out on Blu-ray. Arrow put out a great uh, version of this on Blu-ray. I adore this movie. And uh, it has a great apocalyptic climax. But ultimately, it's the story of one man and his travails. One man who, who just kind of wants a normal life, but he can't get out of... And, and all, another thing is that when Michael Mann made this, he had actual cops and actual criminals playing the secondary characters, and it, it, it drips with verisimilitude and authenticity. Ooh, I love this movie. That's a nice one. That was, that's a good pick. You texted me last night that that was going to be your pick. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. All right, so Rob's pick for you guys to watch at home today is the 1981 Michael Mann film Thief, and that's a good one. All right, I'm going to give you mine now. Uh, mine is a little bit more modern. It only came out about five years ago, I think, five or six years ago. But it only it did not get a lot of love at the movie theaters. And, and really, the theaters didn't even know what to do with that. As a matter of fact, I was working with AMC theaters at the time. And AMC, even when I was out doing the press junkets for it and covering and interviewing the cast for AMC, AMC really didn't know what to do with this movie. AMC wasn't sure what to do with it. And it is it is something that looks like it's just a novelty based on the title of the movie, but it is fresh and it is funny and it is oddly poignant and it's just a really, really good time. The movie I am recommending that you guys check out because I know a lot of you have not seen it is the Jason Sudeikis comedy, A Good Old Fashioned Orgy. This movie is delightful. I had such a fun time 
uh, watching this movie. It is ridiculously funny, and it brings up a very, like, something that probably, like, I'm just going to say whatever it thinks. Something that probably people in a group of friends have thought of one point here. Here's the basic situation. Jason Sudeikis and his group of friends, his whole life, these are all childhood friends that have grown up together. And his father is played by Don Johnson, who owns this great, like, East Coast cottage like huge like thing like a like a martha's vineyard sort of place right i can't remember the exact location and every summer jason sudeikis and his friends would gather there and hang out there during the summers together and at the end of every summer have a single theme huge blowout event to end the summer and that's what they that they do every year don johnson tells his son jason sudeikis that he is selling the cottage he's selling the house which really hurts Jason Sudeikis and his friends. So he decides we need to do something really, really different. And so he gathers all of his friends together one night when they're trying to come up with their planning for the big event. And he proposes, let's have an orgy. And that's the idea. And of course, then every one of the characters represents a different reaction that you can imagine people in a group of friends having. It also stars Lake Bell who I adore. I'm a huge Lake Bell fan. I adore this lady. Nick Kroll is in it. I love him. There's actually, there's a couple of people from the league, from that show, the league in this, which are great. And it's got Tyler. Let me bring up the IMDB page here. It's got Tyler Labine in it as well. And he was in, if you recognize his name, he was in that Alan, oh, him and Alan Tudyk starred in that movie, Tucker and Dale versus evil, which if you've I love not, that movie. Oh, isn't that movie great? If you haven't yeah. seen that movie, you absolutely have to check it out. And so the whole comedy is about these these friends now progressing through inner debating with themselves. Is this something we should do at the end of the thing? And I'm not going to give away uh, the ending of it at all. Uh, but it's all, let me run down just through some of the cast here. I already mentioned, but Jason Sudeikis, Leslie Bibb is great in it. I love her. Lake Bell, who I'm in love with. Michelle Broth, Nick Cole, Taylor Labine, uh, Lindsay So, Martin Starr, uh, Will Forte. Uh, it is a terrific, terrific cast that just had me giggling and smiling and laughing and thinking uh, throughout it. It's just a really good time. And so it's not clearly going to be for everybody. I mean, just from the title alone, you can tell this movie is clearly not a movie that is going to be for everybody. But if while we're sitting at home, waiting this whole nonsense out that's going on, and we just need a little bit of a good distraction, a little bit of a good laugh, a little bit of a good chuckle, I'm telling you what, this movie, A Good Old Fashioned Orgy, delivered. It's not like it's in my top 10 favorite comedies of all time or anything, but a good, fun, entertaining little distraction to put a smile on your face I think there's a this this will go a long way to doing that. So, Rob, you have a great pick, and I don't know that I could have come up with a more opposite pick. Uh, but I love old, it. That, that, that's the point of this. <laughs> yes. Now, listen, almost nobody's... I, I've never asked you, Rob, did you? Because I know a lot of people didn't even have a chance to see this because it didn't play in a ton of theaters. Did you have a chance to see a good old-fashioned orgy? <laughs> no, but I've been dreaming <laughs> of that my whole life. <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, guys, go check it out. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I think you're going to have a good time if you check it out. So, as always, guys, I want you guys to continue on this roll. You jump down to the comment section and tell everybody else what are some good films and movies or some TV shows that they can binge. What's some stuff that we can watch while we're all staying at home? Of course, Rob and I will continue this, and we'll have two new picks tomorrow. So jump on down and let us know what you think of our picks. All right, guys. 